My name is Deborah Fowler, and this is a brief introduction to Point Wrangle Notes. You may be a beginning user, or you may be a user that has used Houdini, but never touched VEX. I'll go into the basic syntax and go through a couple of samples just to keep it short. Now, I'm going to assume that you have some familiarity with Houdini, so if I throw down a sphere, and you know this is the container node, and inside is the actual geometry level at which you have a node that is called the surface operator, or SOP. That is just a node that represents our sphere. We can change this to a polygon, and in the geometry spreadsheet, we can see that we have points, and those points describe the polygon. If we create attributes, such as, say, let's say we do a color node, now we have assigned an attribute with the color. So I could change this maybe to red or make them random. Now if we look at the geometry spreadsheet, what we have is an attribute called color. And that attribute exists on the actual geometry when we show it with the middle mouse button. So point wrinkle notes. What are we going to do with them? Well, to start with, let's just do a simple example of exactly what we just did. I'm going to take a point wrangle, and I'm going to put an attribute by using the at sign. So vex snippets, or vex expressions, that are used inside of wrangle nodes are a subset of the language vex, which was created to create shaders and do all sorts of wonderful things inside of Houdini, but it's a really powerful language. And it turns out that these wrangle nodes that were introduced in Houdini 13 are really handy. Now, prior to that, we could use VEX proper, but we had to create a Houdini digital asset. I'm not going to go into that now. But let's go ahead and create a random color, just like we did. So I'm going to call the function rand and feed it a point number. So point number is an attribute that exists. As long as you remember that an at sign either fetches or creates an attribute, everything else will look very C-like. Okay. So I just did exactly what the color node did. So how is this useful? Well, with the point wrangle node, we can customize and create nodes to do things that we want. So we can create our own custom nodes. So now, let's take a look at the other syntax. Well, for example, in Python, you might be used to having a variable, and we just assign it a value, and we don't actually have to tell it what kind of variable it is. So in other words, it's not specifically typed. Well, in a C-like language, I have to say what kind of item I'm going to store. So I would say this is an integer, and I'd assign it a value. Now, nothing's appearing in the geometry spreadsheet because this is a local variable to the wrangle node. So I have a local variable, Kermit. Now, I could also create an attribute. So for example, here, Miss Piggy is 3.0. And if you look, you could see that that attribute does appear in the geometry spreadsheet. So the difference between Miss Piggy and Kermit is that Kermit we assigned as a local variable, but Miss Piggy is an attribute. And we can see that afterwards, and I can use that value throughout the network. So attributes are common to other programming languages. For example, a turtle in turtle graphics in Python uh, it had a color, it had a position, it had a heading, and so on. So those were the attributes. Okay, so that's variables and attributes out of the way. What about if statements? So in here, the syntax is if, and then we use open parentheses, and some condition, such as if frame is greater than, say, 10, then I'm going to do something. So it can be whatever statement you want, but let's just set the color then to red. And that is a color vector. If that's not true, then we're going to have an else clause, and we're going to say, all right, then the color can be green. So I'm just going to type out the vector. Okay, so the if statement is essentially selecting between the codes. So you can see we now have evaluating based on frame number. And if you refresh the point 
wrangle by hitting control enter you will see that if it's less than 10 then it's going to assign it green because it's false right. one is not greater than 10 so it's assigning it green but once we get to the frame 10 right after frame 10 it's greater than 10 10 is not greater than 10 it's still false but as soon as we go to 11 11 is greater than 10 and we now have a red sphere okay so a very simple example all right so that's if statements now what else can we do well let's also talk about loops so loops now that we can create geometry in a point wrangle node I'm going to call a function called add point so we can have built-in functions functions that are supplied to us or we can write our own for right now I'm going to use add point and I'm just going to set a location for that point so right now I'm putting a point at 0 1 0 now if I get rid of the sphere and change this to details only from points what that does is then instead of sending it processing every point that we're feeding into the node we say do this once and that allows me to create geometry which is super exciting because prior to Houdini 13 wrangled nodes were not existing and we could only create with code such as Python to create geometry vex and vops are strictly for manipulating attributes so this is pretty cool so you can see there's a point there if I turn up the viewport I hit D I'm just increasing the size of the points and turn on the origin as well you can see that there's my point in space one unit above so if I change that point you can see let's change it to 0.5 it's now lower so it'd be really nice to have a control so let's go ahead and create one what I'm going to do is create a value right in this point wrangle node so we're not using the parameter interface we're creating it using a slider so in here we're going to declare it to be float because again in C we are required to reserve the type of variable that it's going to be so that the computer knows what you're going to store so we're going to store a value which has decimals a floating point number as opposed to an integer which is a whole number I'm going to make that a channel reference to call it height and now what that does is it does nothing at this point but if I click on this little slider here symbol it creates a value a slider for me so now my value of y val will be whatever I have in that particular slider so let's go ahead and reference it to y val and now when I refresh it with control enter you can see that I have control over the point position okay so that's cool but what else can we do with it well the other thing we can do is introduce the concept of looping so we've looked at variables if statements now let's look at loops for those of you again coming from a Python background you might be used to using for I in range but now we're gonna use a syntax that's more C like so what we're gonna use is and it's any C like language so Java C++ sharp so C is the base language so let's use that construct for int I equals 0 I less than some number so let's say oh, 50 and then well let's do 10 and then I plus plus okay and then I create the body of the loop using curly braces and that's my block so what am I going to do inside this for loop I'm just going to add a little space and I can also put comments in with a slash so a double slash an example of a loop okay so remember to comment your code always a good idea all right so now we have this loop and what we're going to do is we're going to add some points so I'm going to grab that add point and I'm going to put it into the loop now right now they're all going to go on top of each other because I haven't changed y val it just looks like I have 
one point, but you can see I do actually have 11 points, in fact, because I left that top add point. So all those points are at the exact same place. So that's not what we want. So let's get rid of that. And now you can see that I have 10 points. I'm doing the loop exactly 10 times, 0 through 9. So if you look in your geometry spreadsheet, you'll see that the positions are exactly the same. So that's what's going on. So let's go ahead and change this instead of y val. And actually, let's just leave y value and multiply by i. So now I've got 0 times y value, 1 times y value, and so on. So y becomes the controller of how squished my line of points is. So again, this is just an example. Let's add another control. So that 10 is like a magic number. What's a magic number? Numbers that appear in code and don't really have a meaning. We, the next person looking at it doesn't know where that number came from. So we're going to go ahead and create ent, which is a channel reference for an integer, which is a whole number, and we're going to call that number. And again, we're going to use that, that slider button there, and that will give us a number. So now this is controlling the number, and let's change that 10 to actually reference it. So now we have a control that is controlling the number of points that I create. So very quickly, I've got a little tiny little interface that essentially does like a line. Right? So a line node would do this, but again, we're just demonstrating the syntax. So let's create a different example. Let's create a circle. I'm going to show a few more functions that are built in. So I'm going to create an xy coordinate. And that coordinate's going to be where I put my point. So x is going to be equal to some radius. I can define that as whatever value I want. And I'm going to use 5. And then multiply by the cosine. Now here's another syntax difference from hscript. We're going to be using radians. In hscript, you use degrees. But in vex, we use radians. So we just use the function radian to convert our angle to radian value. We're going to take 360 and divide by the total number, which is just num, and then multiply that by 10, or sorry, i. And that's the number I'm using. So I'm taking and dividing my circle by the number of points I have. So I'm stepping around the circle. So I'm just going to copy and paste this and change y to be sine, since that's the equation of a circle. And so now what I have is the equation of a circle. It's expressed in vex. I go and update this. I can do that. But right now I haven't actually put the position in there, so let's go ahead and do that. And now you can see, if I zoom out, there is my circle of points. So that's a very easy way of creating a circle. Again, we could just bring down a circle node, but I'm trying to show you the syntax. Now, right now, you can see there's a gap. And the reason for that gap is because we've taken and divided an integer by an integer. And that's a problem. Okay, So if we're at 36, it works fine. However, because there's that gap, we want to make sure that we are getting an actual floating point value. So all we need to do is force one of the operators to be float. So we can either typecast num to be float, or we could also have put a point 0 on the 360. So that gives me a floating point value instead of it truncating off whatever what's left. So if you take an integer and divide by an integer, you get an integer. But as long as one of the operands is actually a floating point number, then you're fine. So either one of those work. So I wanted to introduce you to the, the concept of typecasting. So I'm setting that specifically so that I don't lose any information. Here again, I have a hard-coded number. So let's get rid of the radius being 5 and actually create a variable for it, slider. And we'll go ahead, radius and set that again, clicking on that slider value. And we're going to change it to radius and radius as well. Right now, I don't have a value yet. So if I refresh now, it's not going to work. There's no value. So in here, let's go ahead and create the parameter 
and give it a value. There, now we're back to working. Okay. So don't be afraid to break things as you're going. Let's suppose I just got rid of the semicolon. Well, you can see, no big deal. We just look at the message and it tells you, oh, it was expecting a semicolon. Okay, cool. So again, it's indicating where it thinks the problem is. Well, it's not actually the brace, it's right before the brace. So look around the area and say, oh, where's the problem? Ah, so I just broke it again. So it's expecting a brace. So again, these are things that are indicating to you where the problem is. So look around that area and see if you can spot what's the problem. The thing about coding is it's good to make mistakes because the more mistakes you make, the more experience you have. So you'll know what to look for the next time it happens. It also gives you experience reading those syntax errors. Okay, so that's a very brief introduction. And all we've created so far is just a circle of, of points. But hopefully this gets you started. In terms of syntax, just remember that an at sign is used to fetch or create attributes. If you wanted to grab the point information specifically to x, you'd say at p.x or y or z. You specify that component. Same thing with color. If I create color or coming, maybe colors coming in as an attribute, maybe had a color node higher in my network, I could reference cd r, g, or b. So that gives me each channel. The other attribute that you might use is normal or p scale, which will influence how big something's copied to a point. Orientation will affect its rotation. So these are all things that exist that you're going to get used to as you learn more and more vex. We studied if statements with the syntax that if condition, then we do some statement else we do some other statement and we don't have to have an else clause. We've also looked at blocks which are defined by curly braces and for loops which have the syntax where you are declaring your i which is an iterator. It starts at zero, it's less than some value, and then we increment that counter. And again we define our block and whatever statements it's inside. So this would be some statement that we were going to execute. So those are the basics. Um, one other one that's really handy is to use at frame. And that's just a frame number. Okay, so, so those are basics. You can also use functions. So for example, this is a function that isn't returning a specific value. Uh, sometimes we call those procedures, but essentially a little different definition than Python, but again, the syntax differs. The concept is the same. We have a function, we put aside code, and then we call that function when we need it to execute that code. So that's a little overview. I hope that helps. And I'll continue with more VEX tips as uh, interest happens. So thank you. Bye for now.